Well, good morning. It is good to see each of you here this morning. Beautiful day. Can you feel the fall in the air? Maybe just a little preview, a little bit cooler in the mornings and stuff. It's hot in the afternoon still, but it's a good, good day. We are really, really blessed in so many ways here at Devlin. So we wish the best for John and Casey. John will be preaching next Sunday, be preaching tonight, but they'll begin their work at College Side on the 15th. And so we really, really wish the best for them. But it's an exciting time here at Nevlin. Jeffer and Andrea, Jeremiah and Amelia will be here soon. And so they'll be joining us and Tyler and his family. And of course, they've been here with us for a while. But we are embarking. We've had NYG for a while. Now we have NKG, Nevlin Kids Group. So that'll be an exciting, exciting time. So, And there'll be a lot of new things we'll be announcing and new activities and stuff that be geared toward families with young kids and a lot of excitement. So we're just very, very fortunate here. Are you ready? Some of you uh, a little hesitant, maybe. I think Friday was Albany County's first day. I think Putnam County went Tuesday, Wednesday, off Thursday, Friday. You know, Tech Summer School is still wrapping up, but Tech starts here in a few weeks. Ball State, the Vocational School in Livingston, River Center School up there. Just a lot's happening this time of the year. So are you ready? I mean, it's exciting, sort of, you know. You get your school supplies, you know, you get that list. Back then, we didn't have much of a list. You had big pencils and a tablet and maybe a book bag, and you're ready to go to school. You know, now it's like, you know, pages long. You know, you have to, you know, protractor. Really, when's the last time you needed a protractor? Really? But, you know, it's on the list, probably protractor, you know, so. I always thought it was neat when we asked for a compass, you know, a compass sort of dangerous at least, had a sharp point on it, one end and something like that. So surprised they let us use them in school. They probably don't, they probably don't have to have a blunt compass now or something in school now. So it's sort of exciting. A lot of thought, preparation, you know. Some parents and grandparents and guardians think, you know, thank goodness school's back in session. You know, they've been praying for it to come for a while. And some of the teachers said, you know, summer wasn't long enough, you know. I always teach introductory course to the professional students, school counselors, school psychologists, and mental health counselors. And I teach it fall and spring every year. And I always say there's three good reasons to work in the school system. Actually, four. June, July, August, and snow days. But now it's like two and a half, right? You know, so they keep whittling your summer down. So, yeah. But are you ready? From pre-K, we've got some pre-K folks here this year, you know. To college and beyond, I really have embraced the idea that we should all aspire to be lifelong learners. That's why we have Bible study classes. That's why but we, we're all lifelong learners. But just so much possibility. You know, there's someone maybe sitting here this morning who's just learning their alphabet. And by May can read. Isn't that amazing? You know, there are some emerging fifth graders that by the end of the year, they'll know what 12 times 12 is. And there were some cheap things. They didn't tell me about nines till I got in college. And I thought, well, I could have done nines a lot earlier. They just told me, you know, it always equals nine, right? <laughs> Why do they tell you stuff like that? The sum of multiplications of nine times 12 is always equal nine. So, but it's amazing. You're going to have your head filled with facts and knowledge there are going to be some amazing people who are going to help you integrate things together. It's just exciting. So much possibility. It's sort of exciting. Come on. Some people, you know, we always ate lunch at school, but for some reason we begged my mom one year to let us start taking our lunch. It didn't last very long. Okay. I think all we really wanted was a lunch box, you know, because that's what the cool kids have was a lunch box. You know, we didn't want to take it in a paper sack. We want a lunch box. And I don't know what ever possessed me, okay? But when I got to pick out a lunchbox, I picked out a Scooby-Doo lunchbox. And to this day, I'm sure if that's in an antique store somewhere, it's probably a very, very precious relic at this point in time, a Scooby-Doo lunchbox. I'm sure to this day, it still smells like meatloaf sandwiches. Because <laughs> once that smell got in there, you couldn't get it out. Yeah. And one thing you learned, not to put milk in your thermos going to school. Because what happened one time you got home? It was clabbered. But it's exciting. Okay. But are you really, really ready? So if you got new clothes and outfits, you know, didn't you hate it sometimes because you buy all these nice new clothes for school 
you know, you know, maybe they're like fall clothes or whatever. And it's like 98 degrees, but you got a pair of corduroy pants you got to wear to school, right, ladies? You don't care if it's 110 degrees, you can wear them corduroy pants because they look good, okay? Or maybe you got a neat shirt, but, you know, it's a long sleeve shirt. You're going to wear it to school, but, man, you just sweat all day in it. And so. But there's a difference between school supplies and being supplied for school. So hopefully by this time, we've got our school supply drive going on. If there are kids in local schools that need assistance, we're going to try to help them out a little bit with some stuff for the Rick Elementary School. But there's a difference between school supplies. That's the things you can check off on a list, maybe. Things you can buy at the store. But I'm going to talk about some things this morning about being supplied for school that's not things you can just buy. And I'm going to speak specifically to the students. I'm going to talk to parents and guardians. And I'm going to talk to the church. How can we be better equipped at supplying our young folks for school? It's important. They're going to spend a big percentage of their day, a big percentage of their time, around people. And it's really important that we really have them ready. So this morning, we're going to get supplied for school. Not school supplies, but supplied for school. Okay. So first thing. Parents and guardians, are you ready? He says, man, I am so ready. You know, just get them out of my house for a few hours a day. You know, I feel like I've been feeding at a zoo because they're always hungry and there's always remnants everywhere. Some of you shaking your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What they have for lunch? Just look on the floor. <laughs> Part of it's still there. But are you really, really ready? I mean, really, we're called to teach. In fact, Deuteronomy chapter 6, 6 through 8, Several times in Deuteronomy, the command to teach your children, to teach the next generation. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And you talk of them when you sit down in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and there should be a frontlet between your eyes. Folks, the Jews took this literally. You see observant Jews today and you see these little boys walking down the streets in these big long coats and these hats. And they got these big curls and they have a little leather box tied to their forehead and tied to their wrist. And inside that little leather box is a scripture that the parents want them to commit. They took it literal. But the idea was is that you as big people have a responsibility to teach little people about God. Now, the school's not going to do this, so we can't count on them doing this. So it's our job as parents. We have to understand that the classroom is not a brick building somewhere down the road. It starts in home. It starts around the breakfast table. It starts at bedtime. It starts in the morning on the way to school. It's there. That is your classroom to teach them about God and his wonderful son, Jesus. And so we have to teach at home what they cannot teach at school. We have to supplement. And folks, if we don't give balance to what they're taught sometimes, woo-wee, and that becomes their worldview, it's scary. We have to speak as loud and as clearly and as frequently to offset some of the craziness that's out there. We have to have conversations about the importance of a relationship with Jesus Christ. We have to show, you notice that passage says, it shall be in your heart. It's got to get in you before you can get in them. I mean, people who've done the hiring try to find qualified teachers to teach their children. They've got to know something to teach them. You've got to know about your own relationship with the Lord to be able to infuse that in the next generation. It's got to be in your heart to get into their heart. And you've got to be mindful about this. It's got to be intentional. It's just not going to go through, this is another science word, some of you, osmosis. It's not going to ooze out of you and ooze into them. You have to be intentional about it. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. You're familiar with this passage. I know the debate on it. It could be vocationally, they're speaking. But I think there's spiritual application here too. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. You will learn lessons as a child that will serve you all the days of your life. Our children learn things in Bible school as little bitty babes that will serve them all the days of their life. All the days. They will learn about Jesus loving them and how he loves children. And they'll learn the difference between wise men and foolish men. 
they'll learn some basic things about the Bible. But they should also learn from a church family, we'll get to that in just a minute, about how this is a good place to be and how we believe you're important and we invest in you and we want to put in you the truth of God because we want you to be prepared for sometimes a very difficult, challenging life. We have a responsibility to provide physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually for your kids. Let your kids go to school dirty a few times, unfed, and poorly taken care of, and guess what's going to happen? The school's going to call Department of Children's Services and say, we've got a child here we're worried about. Let your child go with, to school with bruises or wounds. Guess what the school is going to do? We've got a child here that we're worried about. Say bad things to your kids. Call them bad names. Ruin their self-esteem. And guess what happens when they go to school and report this? They're going to get a phone call to Children's Service saying, we've got a child here we're worried about. But don't take your kids to church. Don't instruct them in the Lord. Guess what? No one makes that call. No one from the school is going to say, they've missed Bible studies three weeks in a row. They're not going to do that. Why? Because it's not their scope, it's your scope. It's our responsibilities. We're the big people here. We train, we teach, we instruct. We lay foundations. We answer the hard questions. I still don't know why the sky is blue, folks. Don't ask me that one. Okay? But kids ask hard questions. They should be encouraged to ask those questions about the nature of, of the way things are. But never for one moment in their entire life should they ever feel for one single second that God does not love them. Even when they're bad and driving you crazy, you need to be able to communicate, but God still loves you. You may be getting on my last nerve, but God still loves you. So we have that responsibility. So, I challenge three groups, three challenges. I challenge each family to choose a power verse for you as a theme for the year. I challenge you just to choose a verse that you're going to each commit to this year. That we're going to say this a lot. We're going to practice this. It's going to roll off our tongues as fast as anything. I'm going to challenge you. Okay? Now, as I was putting this lesson together, I thought, well, hmm, what could be a suggestion? Now, we could do Jesus wept, okay? That's a little easy, okay? <laughs> there are probably some mornings where they had Jesus wept, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you get him out the door, shut the door, and Jesus wept. <laughs> no, that, that would be an easy one, okay? But I want to challenge you, just a suggestion, this one. Say it together, church. We didn't say it earlier. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. And there's no rules in schools against those things. They'll tell you that you can't chew gum. They'll tell you you can't smoke but what's in class. They'll tell you a lot of things that you cannot do in school, but they can't say you can't be kind. They're not going to say you're using too much self-control there. No, they're not going to do that. They're not going to say, we have too much patience in this school. Donnie, you ever had that problem? No, I didn't think so. Dr. Homa is not going to say, no more gentleness in school. What if we aspirationally just worked on the fruit of the Spirit this year? What if we just said, that's what, this would be a great school year. Wouldn't that be a great report card? The most patient kid I've ever seen. This child's got more self-control than most adults. This child is one of the kindest persons I've ever seen. Wouldn't that be great? This is the most peaceful classroom I've ever had. Wouldn't that be great? It's amazing how teachers, <laughs> I remember when Tammy's mom, she's not here this morning, they're traveling, but she taught sixth grade for many years. And she said, this is the worst bunch we've ever had. This is the worst bunch we'd ever have. This worst. And then she said, but next year, that's a good bunch of kids coming up. And before the end of that year, she said, this is the worst bunch we ever had. And I kept saying, what did you do to them? They were the best. And then suddenly they're, <laughs> it's part of the age, okay? They get hormones around that age. Like, but this is the worst thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then the, 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 what did you do to them? They were good. But wouldn't it be great to have that experience? Wouldn't it be great if that was sort of the aspirations of a family and of a school, of a church? 
is that we just have the fruit of the Spirit oozing out of us. Students, are you really ready for school? <laughs> no. Are you really ready? Seriously. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and may live long on the earth. What was it? Dr. Spock's salutation? I can't do that thing. Okay. Live long and prosper. Is that what this thing? You can do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you bunch of Vulcans. <laughs> Blue bloods, you know. <laughs> so, but Bible talked about living long and prospering too, didn't it? But it linked it to a promise about honoring your parents. And it's not your parents. It's your grandparents. It's your aunts and uncles. You know, it's the older you honor them. Like it or not, God has established order for the world. He created. Respect it. There's a hierarchy of things. It's God. It's your parents. It's people at school, the teachers, the principals. You show other people respect. You represent Netherlands Church of Christ. You're not the church of tomorrow. You're the church of today. Amen? You represent us. We want to get good reports back. We want to hear, boy, oh, those kids from that church, they are just exceptional kids. We want to hear that. You're going to be challenged. You're going to have people who don't understand you. You're going to have teachers who don't understand you. You're going to have people who just, they just get on your last nerve, really. But, and some of them will be teachers. Some of them will be, but you're going to be challenged this year. It's hard growing up. It's hard growing up. But you've got a whole bunch of people here who would step in and encourage you. If you're an adult here and you'd be willing for any of the kids in this church to come talk to you about anything going on in life, would you just stand up right now? So young people, you look around. These adults say, if you've got somebody pestering you at school, you've got someone bugging you, you've got something, you come talk to me. You talk to your brother, sister in Christ. Thank you. You come talk to me. I'll talk to you. I've been there, done that. I might have not been a popper kid. I might have, not, I might have struggled. And I, I still struggle with math. <laughs> that will be a lifelong struggle for me. I think Apple was a little bit divinely inspired by putting a calculator on their phone. <laughs> really? <laughs> I think God started giving them a shove. Hey, put a calculator on that while you're doing that. Okay? <laughs> There's some folks down there need some help. Respect it. And here's it. Let no one despise your youth. Don't let anyone give an excuse just because you're young for your foolishness or your bad behavior. Paul told Timothy, don't let anyone put you down because you're young. You be an example to them. You may have a teacher and I've had some bad ones and I may be a bad teacher. I don't know. But I've had some bad teachers. You know what? I remember a teacher one time. We had some words. And she went in in her office after having words with me. Can't imagine doing that. But she, she went in and kicked her filing cabinet after she had a conversation with me. She kicked her filing cabinet. And I told her later, that was the most, most immature thing I think I've ever seen a teacher do. I wasn't her favorite person. But today, when I see her occasionally, we always warmly greet each other. Because I respected her and she respected me. But we were both different personalities. You can disagree with being disagreeable. And I'm going to say this real quick. We don't need anybody here to be a bully of any kind. And every one of us has had a bully in our life at some point in time. But we don't need it to be named amongst us. We need for you to be what God called you to be. A light. An example. To everybody. In conduct. In love. In spirit. In faith, in purity. Be the exception. Don't be like everyone else. Distinguish yourself by being good. So, make us proud. Remember the creator days of youth before the difficult days come and the years drop by, and I say I have no pleasure in them. Folks, I'd like to tell you that life gets easier, but it don't, it gets harder. And a wise man says, you get the point, says, eh, it ain't much to look forward to anymore. But he says, listen, you remember God now. Now. Let that shape you. Let that mold you. You honor God. You be in God's camp. 
You'd be one of God's kids. You'd be one of God's. You, you do that now before you get older and make a bunch of stupid mistakes that you wished you had made the right decision earlier. It's a lot easier to stay out of a hole than it is to crawl out of one. And those holes come in relationships. Those holes come in addictions. Those holes come in making bad choices for yourself. You know, please, just judging. No face tattoos. We can get through the whole year without that. We've done something good, okay? Because those are real job killers. A challenging, do not forget God. I'm sorry. I grew up in a different time. When I went to school, we actually had morning devotionals. We said the Pledge of Allegiance in the classroom. Someone read from the Bible. Can you believe it? Someone led a prayer. In Miss Sylvia Jarrett's class, we sang Sunday school songs alongside Go Tell Aunt Rhody. We sung Jesus Love Me. And I didn't like Go, go and Tell Aunt Rhody. That was the most depressing song. The old Craig Goose is dead. And the Gossons are crying. That was like, you know, brought to you by the makers of Prozac. I don't know. It's really a sad, sad song. <laughs> Why do you tell that? See, you and then I find out ringing around the rosies about, you know, the black death. You know, I was like, what? We're singing about the plague? I'd rather sing about Jesus. You don't have that luxury. There'll be very few things in school remind you of the Lord. You have to remind yourself. Remind each other. Be strong together. Some of you wear witness bracelets and shirts. I'm so proud of that. It's good. So that's your challenge. Lastly, church, are you ready? Really ready. Paul told Titus that the older women were to be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, and patience. The older women, when you put the word likewise, likewise could be substituted by equal sign. Equally. So everything that said previously refers to the next group, and everything said in this group refers to the other group, right? Right? Likewise. That they be reverent, I'm talking to older women, in behavior, not slanders, not given to too much wine, teachers of good things, that may admonish or teach the young women how to love their husbands and their children. Church, the church is supposed to be teaching. The church is supposed to be teaching. Now, you can do that in a Sunday school class. You can do that to the kids around you. you just, you've got to be invested in teaching. You, you've got to be to do something for teaching. The church has responsibility to teach its younger members. It's a very important thing because the world and culture we live in does not do it. And we can't wait for them to get it right. And there's a lot of good intentional things. I mean, you can put in God we trust on a school building, but that doesn't make sure that it's going to work that way. Because you know what? There's God and trust on dollar bills and people do all kind of nasty stuff with that. That doesn't make it holy. That doesn't make it special. That does not abdicate our responsibility about teaching. We have to do it. Okay? If you're going to be in school this year, I know this is really chaotic. I don't care if you're pre-K or what. Would you just come stand with me up here? Preschool, school age, just come on up here. Don't be shy. Yeah, now you're acting all shy. Come up here, kids. If you're in preschool, come on, come on, high school, come on, don't be ashamed. Come on, come on, come on. Be proud. Come on. NYG, be the example. Look at this. Come on, 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 come on. Come on. And they're still coming. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. If that don't move you as a people of God, of what treasure we have. If that don't do something to you. That God has entrusted us. With these beautiful. Wonderful. Young people. Guys. There are churches you can't do this. Because there's no young people. There's no. This is something special. So. I'm going to ask. Tyler to come up. And Tyler is going to lead us in a prayer. For our young folks. And I'm going to ask Ross to come up. And he's going to lead us in a prayer for our teens and young adults. And John's going to come up. And he's going to lead us in a prayer for us as parents. As teachers. Because we're all teachers, right? Church, we're all teachers. As parents and teachers in this year. So come up and Tyler, you lead. And then when you say amen, you pick up Ross. And then you lead. And when Ross says amen, John will lead the prayer.
Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to be able to come together as a church family, Lord, that we are able to stand before you to worship you in spirit and truth. Lord, as everybody is getting ready to go back to school, as they're going through their lives, Lord, be with all of us. Be with us as a church to help lead these young people, especially as they're growing, they're maturing, they're watching every move we make. Help us to be the example to them. Help us to show them the right way to be, the right things to do, and the right things to say. Lord, be with us as we help them to learn more about you. Help us to teach them that. Help us to also be there when they fall. Help us to look after them and watch over them and to keep up with them. Be with the kids as they watch us. Help them to learn the right examples to be. Help them to lead others to you. Help them to be the people and the examples they need to be in their schools and in their classes and in everything that they do. Be with them in everything. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Father God, we come before you specifically right now thinking about our young people, our teenagers. I ask you to help them to know that they are loved. Help them to know that they are cared for. Help them to understand that the highest King welcomes them and wants them. They're faced with so many different things at this age as we live in a culture that's just so different and it's, we're, they're thrown with so many different obstacles and hurdles and have so many questions. Help them to put their faith, help them to put their hope in you as they search for answers and they search to define things and understand what their life is about. I ask that you please give them wisdom that their search leads them to you help them to honor their parents those that help them but also ask you just to help them to understand and be able to create their own faith a faith that is rooted in your word a faith that is rooted in jesus help them to understand jesus as they're at school give them humility give them the ability to want to serve put opportunities in front of them where they can Show Jesus to others. Give them diligence and obedience. Help them to have joy and find joy and understand that joy can come through you. Be with the people that are around them. Help them to be a lot to those that are around them. Help them to lift one another up at school. Help them to be unified as a youth group and to lean on each other. And when they're having bad days and when they're having just days that are dark, Help them to be with each other. But most of all, help them to understand you, to be the church of today, and to walk in the dust of our Rabbi Jesus. And it's through his name we pray. Amen. Our Father, we know that as parents and teachers, as leaders in the church, that you've called us to a specific worldview and a perspective where we are intentional with every opportunity that we have to shape and mold the lives of those around us that are in our care. Father, I pray that all of our parents and that all of our teachers, both in the church and out of the church, would view themselves as stewards of gifts that you have given. That as church leaders, we would view the young people on the stage and everybody in chairs today, everybody here, as opportunities for kingdom growth, that as the gospel spreads here through our people, that it spreads into other areas in the world. And Father, we pray for our kids, but we pray for our parents, that you would give them that perspective and that worldview. We're grateful for the reason that that perspective is even possible, which is Jesus, your Son, and our Lord. We pray in his name. Amen. (laughs) <laughs> we got this, right? Got this? Got this? Got this? Go, go, go sit down. Benjamin Franklin said, Tell me and I forget. Teach me and remember. Involve me. And I learn. We need involvement. We need everyone here to commit to what you can do for these young folks. As mamas and daddies love each other, be good to each other. Because that's one of the greatest treasures you'll ever give your kids. As members of the church, 
Invest in these kids. Ask them how it's going. How's your school year? There may be some need for someone to step up and teach some knothead like me algebra or help them assist in something in school. Be mindful of doing what you can do. But above all, as we just saw, pray. Pray for them. Folks, we had too many tragedies last year in schools. And we don't want that ever happen in our area. We don't want it to happen anywhere. But definitely not to our kids. So involve yourself in aid teams. Involve yourselves in activities. Involve yourselves in the kids' life. We've prayed about it. And so now I can believe we are supplied for school. Amen? Amen. We are supplied for school. So I know that seems like a big indulgence of time this morning, and I'm not going to ask your forgiveness for that. I felt a need to do that. So I think that we're very, very blessed here, and I just want everyone to know. So if we can assist you this morning, we're going to sing a song of mutation. Ronnie's chosen for us. If we can assist you in any way, please come forward. Let your request be made known, and we will assist you.